Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> hope you've had a fantastic week. And uh, hope next week is even better than last week. If last week was good, then I pray next week is going to be great. <clears throat> and if last week was great, I pray next week is going to be even greater for you. That <clears throat> we go up and up and up and up and up and up. And we continue to flow with God. We continue to flow with His Word. We continue to do and act upon His Word. And uh, amidst all of what's going on around us, stay close to God. If you want me to give you some advice today, stay close to God. Stay close to God. In this disarray of the world that we're living right now, the disarray of situations, the disarray of the world's climate. I don't just mean climate as in hot and cold or rain or no rain. I mean climate as in what's happening politically around the world, what's happening in situations what's happening with um, <clears throat> deceptive, untrustworthy people around the world. We need to stay strong with God and to stay close to Him. And as you keep on staying close to Him and keep on seeking Him first, He will <clears throat> come through for you. He'll bless you. He'll help you with your mind, with your thoughts. He'll help you with your, your body. He'll help you with your soul, help you restore your soul. And He'll help you to renew your mind. He'll help you renew your mind according to the Word of God. He'll help you to cleanse yourself, uh, you know, cleanse yourself from all of the stuff that's been irritating and worrying you and distracting you and pulling you apart. He'll help you to get close and strong and refocused. Refocused. I believe there's many out there that are watching me that God's saying to me, He wants you to be refocused. Refocused in Him. And so <clears throat> this title of my message today is how to receive from God, how to receive from God. Of course, there's many ways we can receive from God. And I'm only <clears throat> going to talk about a couple of things that God spoke to me about. And this is in your, uh, to do with yourself personally. And uh, I felt God speak to me a few weeks ago and give me a, a simple but great revelation as far as <clears throat> Mark 11:24 24 was concerned. But before we go there, let's turn to Daniel chapter 3. If you wouldn't mind going to Daniel chapter 3, and we can now go to uh, verse 5 on Daniel chapter 3. In, da in, in the book of Daniel, here, uh, uh, this is chapter, chapter 3, is talking about King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the Babylonians at the time, who uh, later on got much more involved in control of the Jews, but at this time, king of the Babylonians, and uh, some Jewish boys were there, uh, in the Babylonian Empire, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar was happy for them to be there, but he wanted them to worship the golden image that he'd set up. He, want, he wanted them to worship the golden image. And uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar sets out, because the devil will always use people that are evil, he sets out uh, uh, an instruction that he knew that... Um, there was a great possibility that these Jewish boys would fail and then he could he could destroy them. And which is exactly what he tried to do because he said in Daniel chapter three, verse five, at what time you hear the sound of the the cornet, the flute, the harp, the harp, harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. So they were gonna playing all kinds of music. You must all and they were worshipping the golden image, not worshipping the God our God, but worshipping a golden image. Uh, and Nebuchadnezzar says in verse 5, it set it up. In verse 6 said, whoever falls down and uh, who, whoever fails not to worship in the same hour, he shall be cut, cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So whoever does not fall down, whoever fails and falls not down, Whoever falls not down, in other words, whoever fails to worship this foreign god that he'd set up, this idol, will be cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Well, you know that as much as I do, that if you're thrown into the middle of a fiery furnace, you have zero chance of living for more than about three seconds. And so Nebuchadnezzar knew this, and he knew that he was going to win both ways because either he was going to get them to worship his golden image, in other words, not worship their god, or he was going to worship, he was going to put them in the fiery furnace. He put them into a catch-22 situation, which many of us have in our lives at times, and we think, Lord, which way am I going to go? We're between a rock and a hard place. If we go that way, that route there, we're, we're stuck by the rock. 
The rock's going to stop us going forward. If we go that route there, the hard place is going to stop us going forward. And we're stuck. We're cornered. What are we going to do? We're cornered, Lord. And so they obviously knew that he, they, were, they were getting tested by the Lord God, tested by their situation, tested by their faith. And these three men, it talks about here, in, uh, verse 14, let's go to verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke unto them and said, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these are the three Jewish lads, he'd heard <coughs> that someone had told him, many people had told him, they weren't bowing before the golden image. What wonderful three young men they were, that they refused to bow before the golden image. How great are these men to say, we're prepared to die for our Lord, we're prepared to die for our God. And we're only young, but we are not serving a foreign God. They were on fire for God. That's how God wants us to be on fire for Him. And He goes and He says here, You shall not serve. Uh, is it true, O Shadrach, verse 14, Meshach and Abednego, do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Are you not prepared to worship them? Let me know if it's true or not. And Shadrach Verse 16, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, they were respectful to him, but they said, We're not careful to answer you at this matter. We're not careful to answer you in this matter. What they were saying is, We're not worried about the answer that's going to come out. In other words, we know that when you hear this answer, you are going to get angry and you're going to turn around and you are going to. Uh, uh, throw us in or, or kill us or do something, throw us into the fiery furnace or, or, or whatever, however bad it is so that you can destroy our lives but we're not even going to think about it. In other words, they're not even going to think. They refuse to serve the golden image. All of us when we get persecuted, we always get so irritated with persecution and where's God and why has he let me down there? Why has he let that happen in my life? Why this? Why that? Why this? Why whatever? Why has he let me be subjected to persecution and affliction? Why are things not being good, as good as they were? How come the finances haven't come in? How come I've had to really stand in that area in my life? How come this has gone wrong for me? How come my boss doesn't like me? Whatever it might be. But that is nothing like being told you're going to be thrown into a fiery furnace if you do not worship the golden image. And uh, I just want to say to you, check yourselves now. I want you to deliberate with yourselves. Meditate, uh, uh, think of when you meditate this week, when you think about the Word of God, think to yourself, would I be prepared to give up my life for God, the God of Jesus Christ? I'm prepared to, I might be like a pig, uh, I'm prepared, uh, I might be like, a, should I say, like a, a chicken or a hen, I'm prepared to give my eggs, in other words, things that are sacrificed, but they're not, but I'm still going to be okay. Or am I prepared to be like the pig that's prepared to give my pork and give my life? Am I prepared to do that, so to speak? So they had to come to a decision, but they'd already come to a decision, which shows you what wonderful young men they were. They said, we are not uh, careful to answer you in this matter. In the verse 16, we're not worried about answering you. We're not worried. We're not even concerned for the slightest thing. Yes, you're going to try and destroy us, but Almighty God somehow or another will save us. And anyway, if we die, we go to be with etern uh, we go to be in eternity with our Maker. And so it says here, uh, verse seventeen: If it be so, if it be so, in other words, if you throw us into the fire, our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. So even though they knew they should could die, and they didn't concern themselves about it, they believed that God would deliver them. Isn't that an amazing, powerful statement to make? You talk about faith, that is such a powerful statement. That's indignance married together with extreme confidence. It's, they're being indignant towards uh, the king, but they have great confidence in their Messiah. They're not being disrespectful, but they're saying, our God is greater than you, greater than your commands regarding us serving this golden image. And so it says here, verse 7, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Our God, who we serve. We serve Him, therefore He's able to deliver us. I want to tell you all out there right now that if you serve Him, 
which you do, because you're watching me today, if you're serving him, I'm sure you are, and if you haven't been serving him lately, get back to serving him. If you serve him, then he is able to deliver you from the fiery furnace. And it says here, at the end of verse 17, not only is he able to deliver me, but he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. So then he says, and then they said, verse 18, if, if not, then we'll serve your gods. They put our God on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They put him on a God of Jesus Christ. They put him on a, uh, on a line and said, right now, God, you have to now act on our behalf because yes, we're willing to go to heaven, but actually right now is if we live on this, if we live somehow or another, which actually they wouldn't have, but if we live somehow or another, and you don't help us, or if they pull us out of their burnt and we're still alive or whatever, and we're all, you know, third, fourth degree burns, whatever it might be, and you haven't helped us, we're not, we'll serve the other gods. That is not foolishness, that is extreme faith, because they'd serve God with all their heart. They'd committed themselves to God. They loved God. They knew that in the most difficult situation, the most darkest, despairful situation in their lives that they were ever going to come up against, God somehow was going to deliver them. They didn't know at the time how, but they believed that he was, not only was he able, but he was willing. And so it says, uh, if, we keep, if we keep on down here, um, it says in verse 23, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace, because they, they cast them in there. I won't go through the whole chapter. And it says here, that uh, verse 25 he answered and said lo I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God Nebuchadnezzar saw these four men loose in the fiery furnace they'd thrown three in Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego but he saw four walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt there's no hurt that fire a miracle has happened. That fire has not been able to touch them. You know, a miracle is something God does beyond the ordinary course of nature. A miracle is something like, for instance, God growing out an arm when you, when you have no arm. Healing your arm, if you cut it, is a healing. But if God grew out an arm where you had no arm, which has happened before um, many places around the world where God has done that. But that's a miracle. A miracle is when they said there's definitely going to be this impossibility of rain and God brings rain or whatever it might be. It's beyond the ordinary course of the natural of nature, the natural course of events. That's what a miracle is. Something God does beyond the ordinary course of nature, beyond the ordinary realm, beyond that which would have ordinarily happened. And ordinarily they should have been killed and destroyed. But Nebuchadnezzar, God showed himself alive because of their faith. Their faith allowed God to show himself strong for uh, for. For, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and it also sh allowed Nebuchadnezzar to see him. And because of that, um, God moved amazingly with Nebuchadnezzar and his soldiers and so on in the end of this chapter. But they said, they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And what I want to say to you today is, this is, we've been talking about faith so much, and that faith is so beautiful because that faith just overcomes any situation, no matter how bad. You couldn't get a worse situation than that ever happened to anybody at any time, in any place. And yet, they were in the midst. Imagine a fiery furnace. My dad used to work with fiery furnaces. He was a uh, chemical engineer, and they used to heat up uh, uh, Fuller's Earth in these chemical engine, in, in these fiery furnaces. And uh, I used to go with him when I was a little boy and see these fiery furnaces. Well, they, were, they had massive thick glass and you, you couldn't go within, even then, with them, the doors closed, you couldn't go near them. They were just absolutely boiling hot. They were just absolute heat. And imagine being thrown in that. You know as well as I do, God would have to do a miracle. And the Bible says not even a hair on, the hairs, on their head was singed. God is a good God. But I want to go back to verse 17 again. It says God is a, was able to deliver them, and He will. In other words, He was able and He was willing. God was able and he was willing. Think of those two words. Now, God began to speak to me and say, 
<clears throat> fast forward to the New Testament, Mark 11. Fast forward to Mark 11. God spoke to me very, very clearly and said he wants to help you. Remember I said to you how to receive from God? How to receive from God. And I want, this is about you personally. This is about your personal life. This is not, I'm not talking about praying for, against other people's wills and praying for a nation, praying for an economy, praying for, for, you know, situations around the world or whatever, or praying even for other people. I'm, I'm talking about praying for something where you have the power over your desire, your life, your power over your situation. Anything like that just requires one prayer to God and then to thank Him after that and believe that you've got that prayer answered when it concerns you because you have power over your own will, power over your own destiny, power over all the things that God has called you to do. And as long as it's in line with God's Word and God's will for your life, you personally have the power to believe God and it requires a simple prayer and then thanksgiving afterwards obviously and i'm not getting into that right now but it requires a simple prayer and god began to speak to me and this is what is absolutely vital i've taught on this many times over the years but listen to what i'm saying and think about it a thousand times because it is so important god took me to mark 11 24 and he said here therefore i say unto you i say unto god i'm saying unto you now god's word Whatever things soever you desire, you personally desire, watching me out there, whatever things you desire. Now, you can't have desires over and control over the whole world, uh, and God will lead you to pray for certain things. You have authority over certain things that God leads you to pray for. You can pray for your government, pray for all those other things that we can pray for, pray for souls, etc. But all these other things we pray for are involving other people's lives and require different types of prayer. And, 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 and much more continuous prayer. But when it's ours, for ourselves, there's nothing that can block that. We have agreed already with God that this is what we want because it's our will. So <clears throat> whatever things you desire, you desire, that in other words, for yourself, for you personally, whatever things you desire, whatever things there are today, whatever things in your life you desire right now, so you might desire to sell your house, you might desire to get a new job, you might desire to be healed, you might desire for God to help you uh, restore your soul, re help you re re renew your mind, help you to get rid of all those thoughts that have just been coming and upsetting your day every day and upsetting your life. Uh, to uh, you might you might you might be praying for 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 something that is very personal to you, that you know that just between you and God, whatever it might be, if it's concerning you personally and your life, you have the right to pray here according to Mark 11, 24. Listen to what I'm saying to you. It's extremely important. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire. So if you out there, say for instance, uh, you're called Jane. If you, Jane, out there have a desire, whatever it might be, today I want to teach you something that if you get a hold of, you're going to get the answer to that desire. Not necessarily straight away, not necessarily immediately, but it will come to you. Obviously, it's got to be in line with God's word. Obviously, it's got to be in line with God's will for your life, etc., 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 which we speak about many times. But the fact is, is that mo many, many things we, we, we need and want are in the Bible anyway. So that's automatically God's desire. Like God says He wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health. So it's God's desire for us to prosper and it's His desire to be in health. So if you haven't got a job, it's His desire to give you a job. If you haven't got money, it's His desire to give you money. If you haven't got health, it's His desire to give you health. If you haven't got uh, <clears throat> freedom and liberty in your mind, it's his desire to give you that without you even having to ask him. But concerning your life and all the things around your life, with the Holy Ghost and with God, the Father, anything that is your desire in line with his word is God will give you. He will give it to you. I absolutely, 100% insist that he'll do it. If you just listen to what I'm going to say right now, whatsoever things you desire, it says when you pray. So you pray. It doesn't say everybody else has got to pray for you. You can pray for all these things yourself because this is about your life, your will, and so on. And many times it's not even nice uh, to, to tell everybody else those personal things anyway. And uh, you can talk about to God about it yourself. Whatsoever things you desire. Uh, when you pray, you might God even need to give you some help. I feel just now to tell you, you might need God to give you some strength, to give you some help to to stay out of temptation in certain areas. It might be that. Whatever it might be that's personal to you, how deep, however deep it is, 
However deep it is concerning your mind, concerning your body, concerning your spiritual walk with God, it's yours. And whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, you pray, you pray. Believe that you receive. Believe that you receive. Now, not after you've prayed. You pray, you believe when you're praying. So you believe when you can't see it. You believe that thing that you cannot see. You believe when it hasn't come to you yet. You believe it. That you re- you, when you pray, believe that you receive them. So the first thing you do is believe. The first thing you do is to believe. You believe Almighty God when you pray. You can't, it's not, you know, you pray, praying and then saying, God, if you do it, I'll believe, because that's not believing, that's knowing. But what you've got to do is when you pray, believe. That's why you require faith. That's why you require faith to build up your, 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 your spiritual strength. That's why you need to, if you're praying about some healing, read scriptures on healing. Believe God on healing. Keep on thinking about meditating upon them. So when you pray for the healing, that, 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 that you're at a place where you will believe when you pray. But if you pray and believe, you've done the first thing. Now the believing, this is what the Lord said to me, which is why I went through about and, and spoke about Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Believe is seeing God as able. And many people stop. They say, Lord, I believe you, hoping that he's going to do it because they believe he's able, but not knowing whether he's actually going to do it for them. So your faith is halfway there, but it's not there and you won't get it. Because many people just say, all I've got to do is to believe. Yes, in a sense, Jesus said, only believe. But actually in Mark 11 here, God's talking about to us in the book of Mark, Mark's talking to us about something deeper. He's saying, don't just believe it as in God is able to give it to you. Remember in in, in, in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they believed it. But if they only believed it, they wouldn't have gone into that fiery furnace. And many of us believe that God is able. God is able. We believe that God is able to do many things. Most people that, uh, that believe in God, if they're Christians or no Christians, believe God is able. And when you pray, believe, believe that, in other words, he's able to do that healing, to bring in the finances, to turn your mind around, to help you resolve certain situations you're going through, whatever it might be, to, to restore your joy, whatever, whatever, however personal it is, believe it. But that's the first part. That is the first part. Then the second part, now I know this already, I preached it, but this is what the Lord equated it to me. And he said, many, many people don't do the second part. Believe that you receive them. And receiving it is saying, it's mine. Receiving it, so believe, you believe God's able, but receiving it is saying, this belongs to me. In other words, like Daniel, Shad, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they not only knew God was able, they believed he was willing to do it. And when you believe God is willing you receive it to yourself because God's willing to do it for Jane or, or Sarah out there or Mark or John or Philip, whoever's watching me right now. God is not just able to do it for you, but he's willing to do it for you. And if he's willing to do it for you, that means it's mine. That means I'm going to get it. That means I receive it. That means I believe he's willing. And I don't just believe, but I receive it to myself. In other words, it becomes substance and it becomes mine. And the most important thing for you to remember right now is there's two processes when you pray. You believe when you pray, not after you pray, you believe it and you receive it to yourself because you say, God, I believe you're able. The devil is very clever at getting people to say, God is able because he's God, but is he willing to do it for you? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego believed he was. That's why they knew he would help them in that fiery furnace in the most impossible situation. He got them out of that situation. So to receive it right now is saying, God, it's mine, because God, you're willing to give it to me. Martin Phelps, God, it's for me. It's for me. I believe that I receive it. I've received it. I've taken it. I can't see it right now, but it's already mine. And I believe that I receive it right now. And therefore, because I've received it, I believe it, I received it. Whatsoever I desire, whatever I desire, Lord, I believe and I receive it. And it says, and then you shall have it then you shall have it. So I've got two things to do. <clears throat> not just one, not just believe. Believe is a very powerful word. It's a verb, it's a doing word. And many, many people believe. Say, God, I believed you, but did you receive it? Because receiving is believing God is willing. Uh, <clears throat> believing is believing God is able. 
But receiving is saying, God, you are willing to give it to me. And I'm not letting go until you do it because you said you would. I receive it. If I've received it, that means it's mine. I receive the gift you've given to me. I've received the healing. I've received the miracle. I've received whatever you have for me. And so therefore, God, <clears throat> you are willing. And therefore, because I believe I receive it, I, Martin Phelps, I, Jane, I, uh, John, I, whoever you are out there, Arthur, George, whoever you are out there, uh, uh, Marius, I believe that I received. I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. And therefore, God, nothing on this earth is going to stop me getting this from you because I've seen now you're not just able, you're willing. And like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I might be in a fiery furnace in my eyes, metaphorically speaking, but in that fiery furnace right now, you are going to get me out of it. And not only are you going to get me out of it, you're going to turn the whole situation around me around, which God did with Nebuchadnezzar and all of the, the soldiers and everybody else. God turned their lives around because of the faith of three young Jewish men. And so I want you to say, <clears throat> and then you, you, you have it. So now when you pray, believe you shall receive it, and you shall have it. Listen to, watch this video over and over again until you get a revelation of it. Because many, many people, the Lord said to me, are just believing. They're believing He's able. They, be, they believe in, in a way that, hoping that He's going to do it for them, but they don't believe He actually is willing to do it for them. They don't receive it unto themselves. And when you receive it, it comes over. It, it comes over and, uh, and pulls you over the finishing line and says it's yours. Believing is you're running down that main straight, but receiving is you're going over the finishing line and it actually becomes yours. Now, let me just show you an example of this. Now, for instance, <clears throat> you know, I like to give examples as the Lord leads. I never, ever, ever just make them up out of my head so that, or just try and write down 20 examples so that I can show everybody uh, what a great man of God I am. I'm just a, a great mess without Jesus and can't do anything without Jesus. And uh, So therefore, I, <clears throat> I've got a habit of not writing down any stories or anything unless he leads me or, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 and until he brings it to me so that he can get all the glory and it's not just about me telling about my own life. But now, for instance, you can see me here in the camera. This arm here, this right arm, uh, I had a lot of problems with my s shoulder uh, my shoulders here around the, the joints here, the muscles, not so much the joints, but the tendons and so on. And uh, I used to go to an osteophysio quite often, which is great to go to, there's nothing wrong with that. But a wonderful lady that I went to, super person who was very, very good, uh, I had problems with my shoulders on both sides, and both sides she really worked on, and both sides came right, but the right, this side here that I'm pointing to right now, my right side, your left, looking at me, uh, that actually... Uh, was still pretty sore, especially when I stretched out my hand, when I stretched out my arm like this. And, you know, whenever you do this sort of exercise or you do some weights, I could just feel a tinge sometimes. And it was always sore, not extremely sore, a little bit sore. And I said to her, that's a little bit sore. She said, yes, because on, on, your, on this side, this, this muscle or the tendon or between the muscle and the tendon and, and the joint, um, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a bit of a swelling there. And that swelling will never go. It's just, it's just some tissue there. And that tissue will never go and will always give you problems for the rest of your life. She said, it's not going to be bad. And she was right. And I received that from her. I believed her and received from her, and that, which was fine. I mean, I, I didn't really think about it. I didn't think it's so sore or anything like that that I really need to pray about it at the time. But um, I, I, every time I went like this, every time I stretched, because you've always got to stretch, uh, when I, whenever I stretched like that, it was just it just gave me pain, and I'd have to do extra stretching, go like this, go like this, and it was so ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, just keep on stretching until it eased. So it wasn't bad, but it was it was just there, it was just there, and I just accepted it. Well, when the Lord began to speak to me about what I've just told you a few weeks ago, which I know a lot of it anyway, but He just reiterated it to me because God can show you something twenty times, you get revelation out of it every time. When he began to show me, he said, you believe, which is nothing wrong with it, what that osteo said to you in no normal circumstances, and you receive that for the rest of your life, your shoulder's going to be sore, and I was still doing this. And he said, in your mind, you thought that, yes, I'm able, but me, God, that's what he said to me, I'm able to heal you if I need to. But actually, you know, you, you could carry on like this for the rest of your life, and um, that 
in that sense and having a good osteo and what she said to me and you know it sounded so good in words and so on uh, you you in that sense you just receive what she said and didn't think about coming to me and letting me actually heal it because you just thought she just said to you that's how you're going to be for the rest of your life it's just part of life it's part of it's part of uh, training at the gym and all these things and he said in a way but subconsciously you received that that was right and I said Lord that's exactly right and and it must have been at least six or seven years ago that that happened so every time I've trained I've gone like this every time I've trained then I go like this <clears throat> then I stretch like this this arm so it's real it's not just something that I've made up in my imagination it's not just something I'm just trying to give you a testimony of it didn't exist it truly did exist but then the Lord said to me now <clears throat> I want you to to, to say, I'm not going to receive anything she said anymore, not she's a bad person, but you are a man of God, <clears throat> you can have my best. He said, now believe right now from me, believe that I'm able <clears throat> to get that thing, that muscle right and, and, and the joints and everything around it, etc. what I'm the tissue. And he said, believe right now that, that I'm able to stop this happening anymore from for, for the rest of your life and for any, any more even for a day believe that right now <clears throat> that you receive from me my healing power which will override what that lady said to you and <clears throat> I said Lord forgive me because you're so right I didn't think about it I just took I accepted it I received it he said now believe and I did <clears throat> he knew that I would believe him uh, that I'm able now believe that I'm willing see that I'm willing on top of being able to totally and utterly heal that arm so that it's like the other arm. And I just said, God, this minute, this is a few weeks ago, I said after about six or seven years, I said, I receive absolute, total, complete healing. What that word said, what the lady said to me, I, I bind those words, not that she was a bad woman, but they're not going to happen to me because I'm a man of God. I receive total healing and that my shoulder will never give me any problem again and you will sort that whole situation out that's going on right now on my shoulder. I don't just believe it, I receive it from you. It's mine. You're willing, Lord, to do it. Forgive me for missing that. I receive it from you. I did it by mistake. Forgive me. I didn't even think about it, as so many of us do. And I receive from you, and I thank you that I'm healed. Well, I want to tell you now that it, uh, I, I, I absolutely regimentally do those stretches especially like that every single time that I train because of the soreness that I get on my shoulders after I've trained and a little bit during the training as well on this side should I say on my right side and so it wasn't I didn't think about it it wasn't more than two or three or four days later maybe a week later that I was going like this and I thought well I can't feel anything I was going like this I can't feel anything because I, I with this arm, I don't even stretch much. I go like that, but I, I'll be stretching on this arm. I don't feel anything. I don't, God, I'm better. <clears throat> I'm better after six years. I received it. It's mine. I'm healed. Do you know that since then, not one little bit of pain. Now, that is an example right now. That Firstly, to receive what you believe. And secondly, how even, no matter who we are, we can miss it. Because we can just take for granted what is said to us. But don't just take it for granted. Bless people. Bless the doctors. Bless the osteo. Bless the physio. Bless everybody. They help us. But I want to tell you right now, you've got a greater one, God. And you don't have to have that permanent injury. And it's just so wonderful for me now to stretch and feel nothing. It's just phenomenal. I'm still doing it out of habit when I train, but I don't need to anymore. I just need to go like that to stretch my, you know, do the normal stretches because I am healed. Because I turned it around from just believing, just believe, uh, from, uh, I turned it around in this instance, which I would have always believed God could do it. So in that sense, I did. But I turn around an instance where this lady had said it to me, I believe what she said, I receive what she said to me, which most people would do because that's just part of life, they would say. But we don't have to have that. We don't have to have that. We don't have to be naturally about it. We don't have to have all these issues. And God said to me, you want my best? Believe me for it. And that's a major thing for me. For you out there, you might be smiling and laughing and thinking, my goodness, he's gone on about it. But every time you train to have a sore shoulder, uh, especially afterwards, and to have to stretch and still feel sore, was really difficult for me. But the greatest blessing is that Almighty God, who's alive and well right now, when I turned around and, and, and did what was according to His Word and didn't just believe Him, 
but received it and realized he was willing to heal it and, and received it under myself, total healing came. I hope I've helped someone today. I really believe you should watch this again and again and again because we need to abide by God's word. God is extremely strict the way he operates according to his word and he's trying to help us all the time. And, uh, you know, think about it. Much is given. Much has been given to you. Much is required. But much is required. Think about the opposite of that. Much is given. So God expects a lot of me. Much is required. But guess what? He's going to give me a lot. And that doesn't just mean money. Everybody just thinks about money. I'm talking about revelation knowledge. That was a revelation to me. That was, that was a word. Of, that was knowledge that God gave me. That was so real important. God gives money is just one of the things God will do for you. There's so much more. And his love is the most important thing on this earth. Have a wonderful week. I'll speak to you next week. Hope you get blessed. Bye-bye for now.